Um, we started, or I started doing it in December of 2007. So a little, a little over a year, about a year and four months. Actually, there's, uh, there's three parts to the um, training. The first part is where you um, do a small course on the internet. You know, they have a website and you do that. Then the next um, part of it is where you go and you go to Sunnyvale to their lab and there you operate on pigs and you do the surgeries that we do on pigs. And then you come back and then after you've come back you observe doctors doing at least two different doc doctors doing the surgery and then you can do the surgeries. Okay. And your first few surgeries are monitored by another doctor who's flown in, who's done a lot of cases and that's called a proctor. And the proctor comes in and watches you do the surgery and checks you off to make sure that you can fly solo. So. I've probably done um, over 50, probably over somewhere around that 50, 60 number. A little different at first because um, as surgeons we're always used to standing next to the patient and kind of having our hands on the patient and working with our own hands, but here it was different. Uh, it was kind of virtual, where we're sitting at a counter doing things and we're not next to the patient. So yes, initially it was kind of different, um, but now I'm very used to it. Um, there are actually several benefits. Uh, one, the robotic surgeries that we do um, are usually surgeries that we would have had to um, open our patient with a regular incision and then do the surgery, which would then make them stay in the hospital for um, several days. They would have a lot more pain. Um, with this uh, particular um, kind of surgeries that we do, the patient goes home the next day. You know, most people go home in 24 hours or slightly over that. Um, they have minimal pain and they're back to work in a week or two as opposed to um, being out of work for six to eight weeks after having a big incision on the abdomen. So there are different kinds of hysterectomies that we do. There's laparoscopic, there's da Vinci, there's abdominal, and there's vaginal. Um, surgeries on patients that can still be done vaginally, I still do it vaginally because they heal uh, very fast too. But most of the patients that I would have done laparoscopic or especially abdominal surgeries, these are patients who've had multiple surgeries in the past or have big fibroids and things like that. I just do it with a robotic uh, device. Um, probably since 1995. Dr. Labud has been uh, my associate since 1996, so yeah, for a long time. It's just at Sherman uh, that I'm doing the surgery because Sherman's was the, one of the first ones in the area to get the robot. Um, I do go to two other hospitals. One of them has the robot. They just got it and the other one doesn't. Um, so the one other hospital that I'm going to has just started doing robotic surgery. I, I'm very pleased with Sherman Hospital in the sense that um, when we approached them to get the robot, when we read about it and we thought it would be a great thing for the patients, um, they did go ahead with it. Um, most of the, a lot of the other hospitals don't go ahead with the robot because of the price, the initial price of the equipment. But Sherman was committed to getting the robot um, for their patients. Um, and once we explained to them that the patients will go home faster, they'll have a quicker recovery and so on. And um, the other thing Sherman has done very good is that they have given us a dedicated team of nurses and circulators who are with us at all times. 
So when we do the robotic surgery, we don't even have to tell them much. They know exactly what they're doing to help us out and to get the robot set up, to get the patient set up, to get the room set up. I mean, they're excellent, um, you know, the dedicated team. Um, that's a good uh, question. Uh, you know, in surgery we were always trained to have um, two sets of hands uh, around the patient just in case it was needed and having operated um, for many, many years, I know that it's always good to have, um, you know, an assistant surgeon around. Um, with the robot itself, in case, um, you know, we would have to open the patient for whatever reason, for some complication or things like that. Um, the assistant surgeon is at the bedside, not right next to the patient and scrubbed in. It takes us less than a minute to get the robot out of the way and to open up the patient and then stop the bleeding or whatever complication there is to fix. Whereas um, if the assistant surgeon is not around, then I'm not a, next to the patient, I'm sitting at the console, then I would have to go quickly scrub and then get to the patient. And I would still do that anyways, but it would take me a few more minutes than having an assistant surgeon right there. The other benefit is that if you have a surgeon who's operated with you for many years, like Dr. Lamut has, um, you know, he knows exactly what I'm doing, so he can help me out better too um, by pushing different instruments in or holding things out of the way um, or, you know, helping me along with the surgery. Okay. Um, so it's, it's always good to have an assistant surgeon around. Um, well, it depends whose patient it is. If it's uh, my patient and I'm the primary surgeon, then I'm the one um, who would be sitting at the robot doing the actual surgery. And he would be the one next to the patient, um, you know, passing instruments and helping me move things out of the way. Um, initially, both of us are scrubbed and we go next to the patient and um, I would be the one putting in all the instruments in the patient if it's my patient again. Um, if it's his patient, he would be doing that. And then the one who is the surgeon then breaks scrub, goes to the robot and starts the surgery using the robot, whereas the other doctor just stays next to the patient um, helping.